1. Talking of politics, I was fed up with the lack of political education at my school, especially with the general election coming up, so I decided I would try to do something about it. I went to the head teacher and asked if I could stage a mock election in the school. I thought I would have trouble persuading him, but he was all for it. So I invited students to put themselves forward as candidates, then organised a speech day and a polling day. And guess what? The turnout was 85%. Students went home and researched the different political parties in our electoral system and what they stood for. I was delighted. 2. Did you know that in the last general election, turnout among 18 to 24 year olds was poor? Only 43%? Teenagers are accused of being politically apathetic. But that isn't altogether true. For instance, in Scotland, 16 and 17 year olds were allowed to vote for the first time in the Scottish referendum. You know, when the Scots were voting whether to be independent from Britain. And what was interesting was that young people were inspired and galvanised to think about politics and the future of Scotland. And the voting turnout among the young was incredibly high, 80%. So it just goes to show that when teenagers are included in the political system, they can act responsibly and go to the polling station. 3. As a journalist, I can say that hashtag activism is here to stay. In the past few years, a solid Twitter presence has become essential for any good protest movement. For instance, a hashtag slogan links all posts together into a debating forum so that people can easily find and join in the discussions. <laughs> Incidentally, for those of us who work in the media, news is more and more often made on Twitter than through official channels. So I don't think it makes sense to distinguish between online and offline activism anymore. Social media is not a substitute for actual demonstrations, but a complement to them. Demonstrations are organized on Facebook. Then people go on protest marches with hashtag slogans on their banners. Therefore, other people can see them, go online and join the protest. Digital and traditional activism feed into one another. That's real life today. Four. A rather interesting reaction happened with teenagers a while ago in the States. Thousands of teens wanting to make a point against the perfect bodies found in magazines started posting photos and videos of themselves with acne, body fat, etc. They used the hashtag Don't Judge Challenge. You know, the hashtag was used over two million times. However, some teenagers then started making themselves intentionally unattractive for instance, they painted on spots, big eyebrows, big glasses or missing teeth and took photos, then slowly changed themselves to show that they were attractive after all. Then a backlash started with thousands of other teenagers criticising it on Twitter, saying that the videos didn't empower teenagers but gave the message that people who naturally have bad skin, wear glasses or that sort of thing, can never be attractive. So then, a new hashtag was formed called Beauty in All Challenge, encouraging people to embrace their individual, personal beauty.